I guess it's time to start. There are many people who would be interested in this cross-distribution session are probably also very interested in the enterprise board, so that's probably the reason why we don't have that many people here. Oh, hey, John, guy. come here. We need, a, we need at least one person who likes RPMs here. I like RPMs. Good. How much do you like them? Not very much. I think they mostly suck. Hey, how you doing, man? Now, come on. Give a hug. Uh, there you go. That's much better. Do you want a hug, too? No, I really don't. You have no idea how much I don't want a hug. <laughs> <laughs> go on, then. Okay, so I have collected a few objectives for the discussion here. We're interested in various statuses of distributions. Have new things, great things happened? Have you had big blockers? Is there common stuff Linaro can help you work on? Just please create actions for us to work on. And finally, we don't really want to talk about the big Indian distributions, yeah. but in case someone really is interested, no. feel no. free to talk. Does anyone care? I don't think any general purpose distro intends to do any big Indians. So ever again. Oh, we do other big Indians. Yeah, so a uh, couple of uh, bullets of what has happened since the last six months we had this similar meeting. Cheap ARM V8 hardware that is hackable is available for some values of available since they seem to be out of stock, but technically you can buy them now. The new distribution that has appeared for ARC64 is CentOS and Finally, a few pain points of applications that people have been missing on ARM v8. Node.js has been released with ARM v8 support, and Golang 1.5 with ARM v8 support. That leaves us with a very few high profile things that are not available for ARM v8. Which one? Free Pascal, that's a new new item for me. Yeah. Wookie, you need to come a lot nearer if you want to be heard. Yeah, I'm over here if you want to participate. <laughs> Pick him up. Pick him up. This is weird. It's really creepy. I'm just going to say, but it's yes. awesome. Yes, John, meet Wookie Bot. Hey, Wookie. <laughs> I'm going to send a robot to your house. <laughs> Free Pascal has been fixed upstream. So. In the last two seconds, it's amazing. Is that getting, do I get to share into the microphone? Oh, that was yes. exciting. Yes. So, yeah. Free Pascal's fixed upstream, I've been told. It's a the exciting piece of information I had to impart. <laughs> Technology. Sort of. So on my radar, things that are still needing porting is some uh, features of Haskell and then a specific Lisp compiler, SBCL, which on their web page says that it takes one month to one year to port to a new architecture and longer if you're not experienced in Lisp and SBCL specifically. Any volunteers? No Lisp experts here? I believe it's in progress, yes. So some things that Linaro has been doing for various distributions. We've been porting applications to ARC64 and there's not much to do on that area anymore. Um, currently we have been mostly focused on Debian and var variations like Ubuntu 
open embedded and Red Hat, but we are certainly not restricted to those distributions. There's another operating system that's a bit like the enterprise OS that my guys sell, but a lot of people use it, um, and it's not for sale exactly. But this guy's wearing a wonderful shirt. I think you should say hi, Jim. Say hi. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Say, come join, sit here now, and tell them who you are and what you do and what you do. He's been a good boy. <laughs> Uh, my name is Jim Perrin. I'm one of the uh, CentOS members, um, and since March, I have been focusing essentially exclusively on um, getting CentOS running on uh, ARH64 on V8. So that's been my life basically since March, and, and uh, occasionally crying and sobbing and drinking and, and asking John, why, God, why did I agree to this? <laughs> so. so we're going to talk to him about things you want Red Hat to do. So we mostly focus on open embedded core, but since open embedded core and Yocto are quite closely related, basically a lot of stuff flows in both directions. So we would have to ask Kuhn about that, but he's not around here right now. What are the specific differences between Yocto and open embedded? And finally, the work on kernel unification that Linaro has been doing recent years is there's not that much work on that front. I think everyone uses the multi-platform kernel these days. So that's the starting points. Anything that's on people's mind or So our new CentOS guy, what are the being the most frustrating parts of ARC64 port these? Um, it's more of a personal thing than anything else for me. Um, I hadn't really messed with ARM architecture at all from a developer perspective until March. So it's been drinking from the fire hose. And drinking. <laughs> it, it's... Uh, it's been really interesting, and to some extent we have, I don't want to say double the impact, but we're trying to continue the, the traditional CentOS um, ideology on the ARM side and keeping a core that's very close to uh, the upstream Red Hat code, but then branching from that where the community wants to go to get uh, certain other things going. So we've got um, Golang 1.5, Dockers, and things like that that are subset repositories that can be enabled later on. Um, so it's, it's a bit of, some of it is a fork, some of it is core, some of it, it goes back and forth. So we've got two schedules. Because one would be too easy. <laughs> I'm a masochist. <laughs> I seem to remember Wookie had some, some points he wanted to make. Hello. Uh, only that uh, we ought to pick a triplet for ILP32 in case anyone ever wants to use it uh, and a loader path. Has that not already been done? I think we should spend a few months discussing it. Yeah. And then change your mind after the fact. Yes. Right, so glibc upstream now has an informal policy that we will not allow new linkers that conflict. So uh, if someone's burnt the wrong one into GCC, we'll stop that as soon as they try to commit it anyway. Uh, it's assuming that they care about committing upstream. Right, and if they don't, I'm not sure I care about that. Yeah. 
If they don't, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, so we could sit around and argue about it, but there are a few reasonably obvious options, and frankly, any string that's unique works. So you want to get to the... <laughs> <laughs> I think Wookie was thinking was talking about triplets as well. Yeah? Yeah, he also mentioned triplets, um, which we will disagree on those anyway, and Red Hat will do their own thing, because they refuse to encode ABI where it belongs in the triplet. We love you. We don't. He's the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it should be GNU ILP32, and they're going to pick something else. Yeah, so we're going to go with, we all need hugs. <laughs> Come on, let's get for you. Um, there's, a, there's a string in the wiki page on the Linaro site. Is that what we everyone agrees we should use? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The mysterious that. wiki that you just mentioned. Let's do that. Is that a wiki or a wiki? I don't know, but it sounds good. Oh, 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 was it in the wiki page? <laughs> if you can give us a link, Wiku, can you find the page just to double check for us? So you expect to, to append the IELTS 32 to GNU? Yeah. That's or something like that. That's, that's, not, that's, that's not how the link up is called. Mm. It's called help 64 oh, no. underscore ILP. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 we're talking the, the GNU triplet, not the link. Yeah. So, but my they, they don't have to match. And well, they never they do. Have to match again. They never but do. My impression was that that would be a preferred way to express it. They never match. So, so. Okay, can you pass the URL on some channels that I can copy paste? Uh, well, I uh, yeah. Uh, I'd like someone to um, standardize ILP32 handling as a container type in um, Docker. Just capture. Because I, I don't have any commercial interest in doing ILP32, but you know, maybe at some point we could be persuaded to run an ILP32 yeah, container. So. Yeah, we can do that That'd be my two cents on that. All right, so let's see what people think they've decided. GNU slash Linux slash, yeah. OK, we don't care about the Debian architecture in the Linux yet. Right. Okay, so that triplet is incorrect. That has no bearing on anything we have in. Uh, yeah, that triplet is completely wrong. Period. Should have read that anyway. Yeah, that's fine. How is a triplet wrong? Uh, because the ABI is encoded in the third part of the triplet. That's the whole point of the third part of the triplet. No. How is Big Endian encoded? Uh, Big Endian and Little Indian. I'm trying to think. Get your microphone out of my face. I'm thinking. <laughs> um, Give me an architecture that actually has big and little on the same kernel. There aren't any. Well, technically you can do it in MIPS, but no one does. Um, oh, now I need the name of the MIPS machine. Because uh, usually big and little imply a different kernel as well. And so the yeah. first part of the triplet is the kernel. And the last part is the, is the ABI. So their, their example there for the big Indian one, you would do AR64BE-Linux-GNU-ILP32. Are the big Indian names correct? Because I thought it would be the big Indian. The big Indian comes at the end. Are the big Indian pairs correct down there? Because I thought the big Indian identifier would come at the end after the ILP32. But our, no, I would, I would say arguably the other way around because <laughs> I, I, I would say arguably, arguably the other way around because it's a different kernel. So, so you're, you're doing kernel and then ABI. And those are two separate things. Well, it's already defined in the GCC sources. Of course it is. And when was the last time GCC ever defined something wrong that we had to fix? 
Oh, well, you know, that's happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, let's just fix it. You um, can come in. Let me, bite. let me see if this mess has already been committed to GMC. We're talking about linker paths, Dave. You might enjoy it. Oh, God. No one, no one ever <laughs> talks <laughs> about it. <laughs> this is like it's ILP32. It's a different yeah, linker path. Yeah, this time it's like history. If Arnold stop inventing new things like that. Yeah, let's just stop having things. Let's just stop having things, right? Um, so let me see if this already got burned in. I don't care. Someone could conceivably pay us enough to care if that hasn't happened. Yes, exactly. No one has offered enough money for us to care. So it is worth defining the lower level bits like this. So Oh, yeah, they should be standardized. The string ILP32 doesn't exist anywhere in GLibc, so the fact that this is already committed to GCC doesn't actually matter because no one can build a complete toolchain from our string yet, so we can fix it. So I guess the conclusion around ILP32 is that nobody really cares. <laughs> yeah, we can we can we can take the we can take the linker and triplet arguments elsewhere. They don't need to happen in this room. Yeah. But they should have. Been but they should have. Um, so auto tools doesn't appear to know about it yet either. So it's it's still early enough for us to make sure that everything is synced. He died. People were talking about this two years ago, and they haven't actually managed to get anything into auto tools or anything. Yeah, exactly. So it's coming. Yep. And I'm okay with that. But I still would prefer that it was standardized if someone decided to make it go somewhere. We've done some open and based uh, ILP32 images at some hour of that. I'm so sorry for your loss. I don't think people are even testing those. No, we built we built a whole tool chain based on it. But talk about the package architecture name, which I think has so many hilarious possibilities. I like ARM 96 personally.
Right. Uh, does anybody in here know the state of, of KVM specifically, not just QEMU, but the state of uh, running 32-bit KVM instances on 64-bit kernels? Is that sane and reasonable now? It actually works. Does it work with entirely upstream code of some released version? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. With which? However. <laughs> <laughs> There is that little issue of, of um, uh, having a nice booting experience. So I'm not going to go and say let's do UEFI and ACPI on 32-bit and go back in time. Sure, sure, sure. There is, so there is a little project right now to try to get Fedora building 32-bit using 64-bit hardware and finally decommission the Calzada builders that we have. Yeah, we're, on the, we're in the same, same boat. Same boat, right? So Probably the same builders. Same systems, right? So what we're trying to do is is, um, is replace them. They probably will get replaced with M400s, um, something like that. Similar kind of mm -hmm. setup, I'm sure. Um, so the question has been how to boot them without just extracting a you know kernel and RAM. It's doing it kind of the right the right way for the environment that it has. So that's building a new boot um, that runs inside the VM. And, and yeah, yeah, that stuff isn't isn't really wired up as well as I'd like yet. Sure, no, that's fair. But the actual the actual booting and running bit works you can, great. You can do it, you can do it, yeah. And that's I, as of 2.0, 2.1. At what point do you know that this actually started working correctly? When, 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 how recent is it? Because um, the last time we discussed this, the last cross distro time we discussed this, everyone said, yeah, no, that doesn't work yet. Correct. It's, oh, it's, it's great that it works. I don't know when, which release it actually. I'm pretty sure it was at least from the previous release, what was done. But if, if Lenora wants to help with something, I would say the experience side of it would be good. So, for example, if you had a, I'm only going to say this once because I know people will misquote me on it. If you have a U boot based 32 bit builder and you want to replace it with a 64 bit machine running a 32 bit environment, what you want to do is have the same kind of experience. Right, we just want some standardized cloud booting method for 32 bit ARM yeah. VMs. Well, so Whatever we, that would be. Because Calzada, you know, did the original Pixie Linux yes. stuff in U-Boot. You can, you could literally take an upstream U-Boot suitably built and put it in there. And people are looking at doing that. But hey, if Lenaro looking for something to do, make yeah, that easy. That's actually that would be quite nice. And uh, I mean, everything we did around the 64-bit um, cloud image specification has more or less worked out. We still have some bugs there to hammer out upstream, but they, it's more or less correct now. So something along those lines for 32-bit would be yeah. very nice if, if we could standardize on this is how you boot a standard 32-bit ARM cloud image. Say if, if the, 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 the great target could be targeting an yeah. I, I am sorry. I'm a horrible person. Um, so we let's. Know. I, I know I'm terrible. So so um, so I think a good use case, given that there's a whole bunch of people that probably still have some Calzada boxes, not just us. A good use case would be um, make a U boot that runs inside a 32-bit. VM and provides you with the Pixie Linux support and in other words lets you take an existing 32-bit builder and put it into a VM and have it just work. But it, it can't involve providing an in an RD or a kernel or anything on the boot line because that's so not what we want. Doing exactly the same thing Calzada did with you. Just do what Calzada did but in a VM. Yeah, yeah. And theirs did Pixie with a fallback to slash bootster right. I think. Right. And yeah. that that's basically it. gives you exactly what you want. That's it. We, we're, we're, we're agreeing yeah, here. Yeah, I That's know it's weird. weird. I'll, I'll put watch this, myself later. Put this down now. <laughs> so I think that uh, we express QMU should theoretically work with this uh, Q, QMU setup. Yep. 
but I don't think anyone has really tried it. It's worth it. We've got, we, we, so we've got a project going right now to get this done. I mean, the people will, people will do it, but if Lenara want to help, it would really materially move this along faster and get Fedora onto, I'm sure um, Ubuntu as well, it would materially get those projects faster onto hardware that hopefully has real support rather than sort of kind of hand way. We, we actually have an on-site support contract still that's, le that's actually still active because it's from a company that still has spare parts. But are we going to actually try? No. No. So a task for myself to look on. You boot on QM. Yeah. Aspirational support, yeah. Mm -hmm. So related, again, Adam and I were talking about this earlier. Um, there are instructions for old for older thirty two bit ARM that do that are not supported in V8. Swap. Oh. Exactly. Oh, Swap. Yeah, and whatever. Swap's the only one that matters. That's the only one that's not optional in V7. Uh, there are patches on LTM and floating around for Swap emulation. Uh, we yep. should probably review those and get them merged. They really should. And call it done. Yeah. Let's get those reviewed and merged. And much, much as some people don't like them, they're kind of necessary for, for, for us. Kind of very necessary. <laughs> oh, it, it doesn't, it's, it's a teeny tiny bit of dead code if you never hit the instruction anyway, so who mm -hmm. cares? Just do yeah. And there's there's also the really really old barriers which that, um, it, that's optional in V7, so I don't care. But sure. You might care if you really want to emulate V5. Nope, it's all dead. It's I, mean, I mean, he might. Mm -hmm. I just it's never not just that. As I was, um, the issue is, I mean, you guys may not have, may not have this in Debian. We did have some V7 binaries that were still built with really old config, so they're using the old barriers. Um, and I, I, I've actually I've been bitten by this myself trying to run so there were stuff on V8. Thing, but I can't remember since. It was the same set, basically. Was it in the same set? Yeah. yeah. It's in the same set. I don't know how widespread the problem is. Um, I did kind of offer to Adam earlier that I'd run a, a check of the Debian archive and see what is actually left in there. Um, if, if it, there's only a few binaries, in fact, I could have sworn I have done this already once for Jesse. I'll, I'll, I'll need to check again with Unstable and see where, where, where we're up to. Um, it would be nice if we don't get bitten by this. We should have fewer embedded atomic library stuff now, right? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Jim just made a point that... Um, so there are, there are some people out there that rebuild CentOS that have done it on other architectures like V5, so actually I guess we in theory could care about, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, that's their headache. But right, right. But it doesn't hurt to, to trap, at least, at least, at least catch, uh, swaps, the, swaps relatively easy to emulate, um, crafty old barrier stuff using CR15, whatever, I mean, you, you, you at least want to trap on it and say, bleh, you know. I had a boo boo. <laughs> that string probably is in the kernel. <laughs> well, I had a boo boo. I hope it's in the kernel. No, die hippies come. I hope that's in. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Anything else? Well, given sense, we seem to have run out of interesting topics. Um, ACPI console selection. Um, we so, go. Just, just saying it's a good thing. So we have the um, Microsoft relicensed the SPCR and DVD2 tables uh, into a license which people 
actually don't seem to object to being GPL compatible, and I can never remember what that license is called. It's the Open Web F Foundation license. Which is obviously applicable yeah. to selecting a serial console. <laughs> it, it, I, so I, was I might have been involved in that conversation with them to make this happen. Um, you know, they wanted to find something that was friendly without necessarily putting GPL on it. So they found one. Yeah, I think there were a number of reasons best discussed over a beer for why that. There was a, there were a very ser uh, cunning set of reasons why that was picked. Okay. Yeah, it yeah. Works, it works. But it's palatable to upstream, so. Yeah, um, I, I have for once not seen um, Peter Hurley complain about it, um, which which is one step forward. Mm -hmm. um, so I sent out a series based on some of John's early hacks, which he handed over to Torres. Which mine was shit. It was nasty shit, and you did something better. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's still not quite good enough. It still needs some work, but it would be interesting to get people actually working on it once distros have ACPI-enabled kernels to, to actually um, test it, comment, and whatever, because basically the current state is um, the two people who are commenting are, well, there's Rutland who, who comments, um, there's Torres who wrote the original, and yeah. there's me. So some, some more reviewing would be useful. And also, um doing work on x86 to get it working as well would be cool because... Yeah, I mean, that's the bit I'm probably going to um, myself object to on moral reasons <laughs> and base that I don't really care. Yeah, um, but, but we should get but, people who do all, to help. I, I don't really do ACPI development on x86 and someone who has a clue about that should probably yeah. be more useful to do that. But I mean, the distros should, if they have, yeah. if they're looking at this, they should also say, gee, I could get SPC, I mean, no one says G, but if you do say G, you could get SPCR working, and DBG2 and whatever, working on um, x86 yeah. as well. And that would actually be cool if you ever had a weird UART on an x86 box. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's, he might like you more than he likes me, so you could ask him. He definitely likes me more than he likes that's me. That's what I mean. I know the answer to that. So, so someone might ask Matthew. It's if, actually possible that he hates me and still likes me more than <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe, yeah. That's actually the last, that's the last piece, I think, of the core um, ACPI sort of gunk that we need to be able to boot a system in, a, in an x86-ish friendly way without lots of command line options. Well, Once we upstream no longer. X86 code. When's that gonna happen? <laughs> Once um, we get rid of upstreams, um, use ACPI Choosing, only right. with force, right. um, then, then we pretty much have parity, I think. Yeah, it's nice, yeah. Uh, other things in cross distro. Um, can I bring up something stupid? Go, go. So since I'm the new guy here, I'll ask a stupid question. Um, for VMs with ARCH64, the uh, EDK2 Tiana Core fat driver issue. Does anybody care about that? Am I? A lot of people. Yeah. Okay. Why didn't Am you I? Bring that up yet? That was a good. We should have brought that up. What's the status? Why didn't you bring that up yet? What's the status? Um, there's various things people keep talking about. Latest bid was someone going, oh, I'm going to extract the grub driver. I think Laszlo's kind of driving this now. It's, and someone's working on extracting the grub fat driver. And they're getting a separate repository set up under Tiana course management, but not the main EDK2 tree where they can keep the GPL license driver because the Intel guys don't want to have any GPL in that tree. So Laszlo's driving it? Yes, whether he's the one actually doing the grub fat driver work or not, I don't remember, but uh, he was the one mentioned it on the list. Oh, okay. So he, he's going to be in charge of what is effectively a OVMF clone of main EDK2, which has the sole purpose of having a different fat driver in it uh, and otherwise containing all the rest of the EDK2 tree. It's still a far from ideal situation, but I guess it's at least a small improvement. So there is one, there's one other thought I've got in firmware, which is, thank you by the way, um, the, um, 
Well, two things. So we've been having a number of issues with early firmware that still has things like the Linux loader built in it that... Attend my session tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> we should vent there, That's I guess. The Venting for beginners? I genuinely presented my proposal for, can I just have a rant for an hour? Good. Um, that's basically it. Because I've made several vendors take the Linux loader out, but there's a whole list of BS that's still there. That Yeah, I'll, yeah. So I'll go into it in detail in, in my talk tomorrow anyway, so we okay. can do it more there. We'll just but vent there. Basically, even the current state of AppStream ADK2, yeah. even the horror that is ARM BDS, yeah. no longer has the built-in Linux loader right. built in. Right. It's still in the image, but it's not built that, into the BDS. That, that vendor you're thinking of, I had them take it out last week. So one of them, it's gone. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. But related to that, so the related point there was um, that we were getting situations where boot order was getting corrupted because the firmware had sort of magic... You know, it, it, it was like, well, I've got this crafty bring up code, so I'm going to uh, screw uh, up my No, bootloader. there were multiple issues. Right. Um, right. And, and the, the visible symptoms might not have been necessarily what you thought, and complete and utter craziness might have actually been happening. Correct. So as long as you're going to vent tomorrow, that's perfect. Are you also, the other, the other, the other uh, half of the question was about phone I said tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow. Okay. I have one session, right? Okay. It's that one. The other thing is, in terms of firmware, I think anything we can do as a distribution community to encourage um, if you know if there is a Lenaro lead project happening around reference architectures and reference platforms I think it'd be really good if we could collectively um, test that and also make sure that we're providing input so we can show cheap ODM X Y or Z who's building a system here's a reference and also we also all stand behind that and here's how to talk to us about it mm. that's my two cents more than two cents. It's just the one cent toss. It's not one whole cent toss. It's invalid. Or the super popular 50 cent toss. Are, are, are centos on the cross distribution mailing list yet? No, we just discussed that. We're going to get it. Get I was not aware of that mailing list until I walked in here. Most of the people subscribe to it aren't aware of it. <laughs> and you're one of the happenings. <laughs> That's unfortunately <laughs> true, but. There's still some useful things that pop up on it from time to time. I was thinking about U boot. Did, did um, you know, sort of U boot cross distro standardization? I don't even touch that for obvious reasons. But um, yeah, I just, I just keep, keep in mind, right? But the, the, um, Dennis and Co did, I think, a really good job at trying to standardize the setup of U boot. Is there any more follow up yeah. there or thoughts? or? I'm for 32 bit. I, I think the fact, I, I don't really care. People are going to do U-boot on 64 bit as well. Just well, not it, it, it is inevitable. Space. Um, but so I think there is a little bit of an issue. There was good stuff that happened there. There was really good stuff that happened there. But there still wasn't, it didn't quite go far enough um, in, in what they did standardize. So I don't think you actually end up with a scenario where you can be sure that your image is going to run on anything. Yep. Um, things like I think it doesn't didn't include the uh, I'm I'm basically making shit up here now because I don't know, but I think for example it didn't mandate GPT partitioning, or if it did, it didn't mandate to have the U-boot API enabled, mm -hmm. which means you can't run Grub under it, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, yeah, they don't run Grub. Yeah. No, uh, which is, case. you know, it, it's the difference between that effort was basically about getting U-Boot to be more standardized, not about having U-Boot be more friendly and right. compatible with everything. Um, I the think other the half second of that, half is, is something that needs to happen. Is that exactly, that was what I was going to say, is, is, that, ex is that as an activity something that, that we should capture and have people work on in Lonaro still? Because they're not currently. I'm not aware of anyone doing any work on it, right. and it would probably be useful to have someone do that. Especially for your 32-bit cloud image or whatever situation, right? So. Well, I mean, for anything, right? You're going to have people who will want to have a, U -boot a thing. smaller bootloader where you can sort of select, not select to support lots of things that you don't need for your specific application, mm -hmm. but you still need to have a guaranteed level of compatibility. Yeah. So I think it would be useful. Anyway, let's put that on the list and get someone in Lenaro to 
you know, if people are looking for things to do, that's not a bad thing to be. That's twice I've advocated for you, Boot, today. <laughs> That's the best answer I've had so far today. Just integrate it into system D. That would be the answer. <laughs>